The right tool for the right job. You have to have the right tool for the right job. Have you ever tried to tighten a bolt head with a pair of needle nose pliers? I can tell you that I have. There's been a couple times where I've had just my Leatherman on me and I can't quite get the leverage that I need and I, I'm trying to tighten it up and you end up pinching your fingers because you're trying to get enough pressure on the handles and you just mar up the bolt head. Well, I've done that more times than I care to admit and that's a good example of how just go get the damn socket or the wrench. You need to have the right tool for the right job and that applies to gloves as well, right? So you gotta have the right gloves for the job. It makes absolutely no sense to get a beautiful Napa lamb dress glove and go and split wood with it. But on the other hand, you don't really wanna wear big thick work gloves out on the town. But today we're gonna to talk about work gloves in particular. And we're gonna do so thanks to Sullivan Glove Company who actually gave me uh, one of each of the types of leathers that we're gonna be talking about in this video. So shout out to them. They also gave me some samples of the hides so you can get up close and personal and really see what I'm talking about. Now the other thing is, just to be fair, I'm not gonna be able to cover every single leather that's out there. I, even if I tried, I probably couldn't. But there are plenty of other leathers. I'm gonna just try to cover the ones that you're most likely to come across. That way you can make the right decision for yourself. Now here's the deal with me and gloves. Most of the time I would go to Home Depot, I would buy the three pack of gloves and I would just wear them and use them and probably lose them as well. Splitting wood, doing yard work, just work stuff, I would just use those. And they were okay, and I've been doing that for years, so I have to claim ignorance here. That's kind of what I thought every work glove was like. So that's what I used to use. And I think that those were just some sort of cowhide split. They weren't anything fancy, and most of the time, they would end up blowing out on the, the, the thumb and the forefinger, sometimes in this area right here because of grabbing pieces of wood, which just seemed to murder gloves. That was my extent of the experience with leather gloves. Really, I mean, beyond dress gloves, uh, that's what I knew. And of course, we have the ones that were issued on the job, which are usually the stretchy kind with a sort of like a, a palm that's made out of a rubberized material. Not often do we have real leather gloves. They're just not, they don't make sense cost-wise. So actually getting these was a pretty big eye-opener. And I wanna start in the beginning with deerskin. Now deerskin, is beautiful it's nice and soft right out of the box i mean this is the kind of stuff that you would want to wear if you were just walking around the town and you wanted something just another layer to keep your hands warm uh this would be perfect i mean they are really on like just this side of a dress glove you could still do work in them they're not quite a dress glove but uh they could pull like casual use if you wanted to if it's really cold out there get a pair of these lined in fleece and you're gonna be good to go they're they're beautiful very very nice and some of the interesting properties of deer skin they're very well suited to certain tasks so you can really feel you get the tactile feedback of pushing buttons or small controls. So if you're somebody who has to work with that, maybe inside of a machine where you have thumb controls on your joysticks, you can feel those through deer skin. And you're not really doing anything that's very abrasive to that leather, so these would be perfect. These are a great driving glove or motorcycle riding glove or airplane flying glove because again you can feel the buttons and the controls through them i mean they're even good for like flying a drone outside in the winter time when you have to actually feel the joysticks they, they work really great and one of the nice things about deer skin in particular is that it can get wet and then dry out and it'll be just as soft as before it got wet it won't turn kind of like hard and crusty the way that some leathers will. That's really, really nice. And I would say that if you're somebody who doesn't do a ton of manual labor, but occasionally you need a pair of gloves or you just want some to keep you warm while you do some kind of lighter duty things, these are perfect. Now moving up just a little bit is elk. And elk is kind of like, it's like deer skin's thicker cousin, where deer skin can be cut very, very thin, like two and three quarter ounces. This actually starts at four ounces, so it begins a lot thicker. Um, and the nice thing about this is that it's still soft. You can see that it's a very soft leather. It feels very nice. Not quite as soft as deer skin, but still there. It also has more abrasion resistance. It's a tougher leather. This actually, elk is a little bit better for wet work. So if you're doing something in a damp condition or just a wet condition, these really hold up a lot better. And the nice thing is that elk can get wet and then dry out several times without cracking. A lot of times leather, it weakens and it dries out and it just, it, it cracks. Elk won't do that. 
And so being somewhat water friendly, both elk and deer can be hand washed. So if you get them dirty or nasty or whatever, go ahead and just hand wash them, dry them, and then they'll be good to go. So that there is elk. Moving up the toughness scale just a little bit more is goat. Now goat is probably what you have if you have any sort of decent work glove because good work gloves are usually made out of goat. And the reason for this is that they have extremely tight grain structure, so they're very abrasion resistant. These are probably the best all around work glove that you could have. So if you're doing just yard work or anything where you're, you're really working with your hands and you don't need any sort of levels of penetration protection or anything like that, this is gonna be perfect. Now, this, it should go without saying, starts off a little stiffer than elk or deer. Now, over time, it will break in. Now, you do lose a little bit of that tactile feel that you get with the softer leathers. This is really better for using a rake or using a shovel or any sort of hand tools because it's, uh, it's really just like the default work glove leather. It's awesome. It works really, really well. And it's actually somewhat water resistant due to the natural lanolin that's found in the hide. But if you want even the next level of protection, you want extreme abrasion resistance, you want, you know, to grab a bunch of thorns and pull them out and not have it come through your glove, then you want buffalo. Buffalo is one of the kings as far as leathers go. And uh, especially with work gloves, it is, it's great. Now, the cool thing about buffalo it's stiff, there's no doubt about it. It's about, eh, I'd say on par with goat. Once you start breaking it in though and it softens up, it's just, it's very nice to use. Now, of course, it's not as nice as the deer skin or the elk, but this here is really more a particular kind of work glove. This is something that you're gonna wanna wear if you are working with barbed wire, if you're working with things that could come through the glove or if you're working with stuff that usually will wear little holes in your glove you know like a lot of times I get that when I'm, I'm working with wood you know the edges and stuff like that eventually it'll wear through the thumb and you know the the gripping area it won't with buffalo well it will eventually but not until you ran through several pairs of those cheap gloves that you get at Home Depot then of course there's our good friend good old cow leather this is the stuff that's on your boots and it's just sort of the default you know when people think of leather, they think of cow leather, traditionally. The thing with cow leather, though, is that it usually has to be somewhat thicker in order to have the same level of protection as these other guys. It's great, and it's a wonderful boot material, but if you think about it, you wouldn't necessarily want to have the thickness of the leather on your boots for gloves. It's just overkill. You won't be able to feel anything, you won't be able to move, so oftentimes what companies do is they will actually put layers of cowhide in high wear areas. And this can work fine. Now, matter of fact, it could be preferable, especially if you can replace those little spots. But most of the time, if you see a cowhide glove, it's usually a hardware store glove because they're cheap, they're, they're very affordable, and uh, you know it, it works pretty well for most people who are doing weekend kind of stuff. But really, when it comes down to it, cowhide is great for a lot of things. Luggage, footwear, jackets. For hard working gloves, I don't think it's the best option. Now, beyond the actual leather that your gloves are made out of, you wanna make sure that they're built in a way that isn't gonna create hot spots down the road or just be really uncomfortable wearing them for eight, 10, 12 hours a day. You wanna make sure that they're made in a way where it allows you to just do your work. They get out of the way of that. And actually, Sullivan Glove, what they do is there are very minimal seams on these. As a matter of fact, there's only four places that there are seams on these gloves. And I've definitely worked with gloves where there are, are too many seams. And the problem is, as you can see, they're actually folded in. And one of those, just, just rubbing against your skin can really rub it raw. And you, cut, you take your hand out and you got a blister because not of what you were working with, but because of your glove. And that's the whole reason that you wanted to wear gloves in the first place was to you know, put another layer of protection between you and the tool that you're using. So that's one nice thing about this company is that they actually, they intentionally have fewer seams than uh, you might otherwise find on cheaper gloves. Now, one of the other cool things, I always thought that, hey, the tougher the materials, the better off we are, right? You know, you know a work glove should be tough, first and foremost. Everything on it should be bulletproof and of the highest abrasion resistance. Everything should be top quality. Well, here's the thing, and I didn't think about this until I actually spoke with the guy from Sullivan Glove. He said, here, you can get Kevlar thread, which is damn near unbreakable. The problem is, though, is after a little bit of time when you're working with these gloves, the thread won't break, the leather will give way. 
and it's much easier to replace a stitch or a piece of thread that came loose than it is to try to re-sew uh, split leather. It's just not going to happen. I mean, think about it if you are riding a motorcycle with these and you had Kevlar thread holding them together and you go down and then everything's starting to break and everything like that, but you have this unbreakable thread. How messy that could get as it tore through the leather and maybe into your skin. Nightmare scenario, I know, but still. So what Sullivan does, they actually use a heavy duty nylon thread. And this is, it, it easily will handle any work task, but it won't be like Kevlar thread where it'll actually tear through the leather. And again, it's something that I never really thought about, but it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Now here's the thing guys, there are so many leathers out there. There's a ton of them, some exotic, some, you know, like kangaroo, which is supposed to be damn near indestructible, but I live in the States, you know, we don't have a lot of kangaroo around here. Uh, so there are plenty of other leathers out there with different benefits to them. Here, at least where I live and maybe where you live, according to my analytics, a lot of you live in the States, this is what's pretty readily available. So now you have a little bit more information on choosing the right tool for the job. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please think about subscribing. All that good stuff that, you know, YouTubers have to say. There you go. I'll catch you next time.